Welcome to the last section of this course, section 9, the power of PySpark. In this section, I will share with you how Spark can be run in the production setting and not just in our lab environment. You will learn about submitting applications. Then in the second video, I will talk about running Spark at scale, sharing with you vendors that can run Spark in the cloud, as well as showing various things to keep in mind while scaling up, such as configuration mappings. And finally, I will round off this section by sharing with you tips, tricks, and takeaways. By the end of this section, you will have completed all the video material for the course. You should have a good understanding about which steps to take next in your journey to mastering Spark. Welcome to the video, Running Spark in Production. In this video, we will be talking about submitting Spark jobs to a cluster, and I will teach you about how you can package your PySpark applications to be able to submit them successfully to your cluster. So first, let's talk about running Spark in production. The first thing that is important when running your scripts in production is knowing how to actually submit them to your Spark cluster. So Spark ships with a handy command line tool that takes care of submitting your jobs for you. This Spark submit script is used to launch applications on the cluster, and it can use all of Spark's supported cluster managers to a uniform interface, so you don't have to configure your applications especially for each one. On the left here, you can see an example of what it would look like. The script is located in Spark's bin directory. So if you know where Spark is installed in the bin directory, you can find Spark submit there. You specify a master, you specify a deploy mode, you give it configuration, so this can be many. Then you can, in case of Python, you give it your PyFiles application package, if that's applicable. We'll cover that in just a moment. And then you point to your application Py. So to zoom in a little bit about how this looks like in Python, because I feel that the main documentation for Spark is not good enough to explain how that really goes for Python. It looks a bit like this. So here's an example of submitting a PySpark job that is wholly contained in a single file, and we named this example.py. So simply, you would just run Spark submit example.py. So you don't have to add a whole bunch of doodads if not necessary. You just run Spark submit example.py. So what happens is that this file is picked up by the driver, and the driver parses this file and starts the application accordingly. So this is when you have a single file application. So that means that in your example.py, you have everything that you need to be able to run your application. In reality, however, you also have applications that have multi-files or packages. So what you then do is that you use the minus pi files application, minus pi files way of running the Spark submit. And what you then do is that you give it a packaged application, which is either going to be a zip file or an ag file or a real file. And I'll zoom in that in just a moment. And what happens is that the more complicated applications that you can prepackage them and Spark will then broadcast those packages to the executor. So it makes sure that it's available in your Python runtime. So if your code depends on other projects, you will need to package them alongside your application in order to distribute the code to a Spark cluster. So to do this, you can create a package by simply placing all dependent files into a zip file. Alternatively, you can use a Python package manager to create an ag or a wheel file. If your dependencies live inside of a single pi file, like I just explained, you can also simply submit that extra pi file along. Multiple pi files can be submitted by passing them as a comma separated list. As I just showed, you can use the minus minus pi files argument of Spark submit to add pies and zips and wheels or ags to be distributed with your application. I recommend using zip, ag, or wheel for anything that requires more than two files to be submitted. So let me show you what this looks like. So let's quickly head over to our lab environment. Let's navigate to section nine. In section nine, I've prepared a packaged application example. If we open this packaged application example, what you'll see is that there's a few files there. So the main thing here is a setup.py, which is a very, very simple version of a setup, but you can make it much more complicated if you want to. I have a package called package test. I'm versioning that 0.0.1, and I'm using setup tools find packages to be able to determine which folders I need to package here. So if I would put more source folders here with valid init files in there, they would all show up and be packaged with you together. So this is a good way to set up your dependencies. So what does this look like? Okay, so let's go through that. So I've prepared a readme as well, which is both in a markdown and also is a notebook. Unfortunately, the markdowns don't open well inside of Jupyter Lab, so I'm opening it here as a notebook. What you can see here is I'm explaining how it works, so what you need to run. So if you want to create an ag file, you need to make sure you have setup tools installed. This Jupyter Lab environment has that wheel as well. And then you can run Python set up the pi beat this egg, or you can run Python set up the pi beat this wheel, depending on if you want an egg or a wheel. Note, by the way, that wheels are notably missing out of the PySpark documentation. So Spark documentation does not mention wheels, but they do are supported. Once you run that, you get the resulting package. I'll show you that in a minute, uh, what the layout of that is. And then we can actually use this to Spark submit. 
So let's head over to the terminal window here. What I've done actually, I've copied the packaged application example into my work folder so that way I don't mess up my main thing what's going on. But before I run anything, let me actually show you what's inside of source. So source has a main.py. Main.py is a very, very simple Spark job. It is just creating a ranged data frame. So a one row, one column data frame. And I'm actually here importing from jobs, which is the folder over here. I'm importing a hello world job. And from there I'm importing Spark. So let's open jobs. Let's check out hello world job. All right, here, here you can see from PySpark SQL import Spark session. So that's how I, I normally wouldn't do that in a sub package, but it's just to show the example. This one will print hello world and it will create a Spark session. And that's the one I'm using in my main Py. So in a more production-like setting, this would likely be much more complicated, but obviously this is just for example purposes. So let's head over to this word folder here and to show you that the same data is present. Oh, but the notebook, because I didn't need that over here. I can run set up the Python set of the Py and create a wheel file or an egg file. So let me use a egg as an example, which is this. And now what you'll see is that there is two new folders, which is build and dist. So let me visualize it over here. That makes it a bit easier. So I'm over at my work folder. Here you can see I now have built and I have dist. So if I look at built, there's just some information regarding the build that is ran. So this is not really all that important. It, it will have some stuff, but you know, so basically everything that you have packaged, but you really don't need to use that. What is there is dist, and this is the ag file that you want to use. So we should be able to copy the path. Let's see if this actually works. It does. So I want to point Spark to this file. The spark submit however i'm already in the packaged application so i don't need to do all that so i can remove a part of this there we go so now i'm going to run spark submit on pi files which is my package files and if i do it just like this it will complain because it also needs to have an instruction so it's not actually going to take the instructions out of the egg what it will however do is run what it will however do is distribute this egg across all the nodes in my cluster well i have one node cluster so that's not really that much of a deal but it will make sure that this content of this egg is available in the python environment of all the nodes okay so next thing i need to do is actually i need to point it to my main.py which that one leaves inside my source so then i would have to run source slash main.py and now i'm saying distribute this package across my cluster and run main.py let's see if it works there we go. So it showed our data frame, our little one row, one column data frame. There's nothing much to that, of course. And further up, you should see hello world from sub package. So here's an example of how you would go about packaging Spark jobs. So you do need to make sure that you always have the main.py available as well, but it's a really good practice to use eggs or wheels and put them in a central location. So you could, for example, if you use AWS, you can put them in an S3 location, or if you have the ability to use a museum or an artifact tree, you can release this as an artifact. It also gives you the advantage of having the ability to version your stuff. So you can version your deploys and you can also have rollbacks. That's a side effect that's actually really good about this. If you have a new version of a cleaning function, for example, that you want to distribute that does a slightly different thing than before, you could package it in a new version and simply point your Spark submit to a new version of it without having to change any of your other jobs. So that's the advantage of this. So what we usually do inside of jobs is that the main pie that you run is a very simple script that's just a front door loading libraries and in the libraries that you load you actually do all the magic so that's how you package an application and of course we we're talking about spark submit command there is quite a bit more to it i showed you just the very basics here so what i encourage you to do is look at this link here about submitting applications it actually goes into a lot of depth about how spark submit works and which other things you can do so if you have jar dependencies, for example, if you want to read out of, let's say, a SAP instance or Microsoft SQL, or maybe you want to connect to an Oracle database, those are not natively supported out of the box by Spark. So what you would have to do is then package along the jars, or you would have to use a repository to do that. And how you would go about that and which things are possible is all explained inside of the official Spark documentation. I don't have to go into much detail. The thing that is notably missing there, though, however, is what I already mentioned, is the way that you particularly do it with Python. There's maybe two lines in there saying that you can use Py files for that. And I believe that's not enough. So that's the reason why I wanted to give you a little demo. So besides Spark Submit, there is also another way to do submit jobs, which requires you to install an additional Apache application, which is called Levy. 
Now, Proxy Levy is a RESTful interface, basically RESTful API that lives in front of Spark. So it is an addition to Spark, an, an add-on. It's an, on the active development, it's still incubating. What it does, it is basically giving you a REST server so you can just do RESTful API. So this is very handy if you are in a more web kind of setting where you need to trigger based on some kind of front end or whatever, where you don't have access to a Spark submit CLI tool. That is where you can use it for. So you can check it out on leafy.apache.org. It is an extra, like I said, it's an extra application that actually needs to be installed and set up. There's other ways, for example, when you're dealing with the vendors that I'm going to be covering later, then they also have their own ways of doing Spark submit jobs. But for now, we're just going to stick here. So what have you learned so far? So you got to learn about packaging your application and how you can submit that into a Spark cluster.